Hi there, and let's get to it. Today we're looking at the sizing palette on the color page of DaVinci Resolve. If you've been watching the preceding videos, most of the controls will already be familiar to you as a result of working in the edit page, and more specifically, the inspector. So here, where we have our transform and cropping controls, you'll see them reflected in the three columns that you're presented with. On top of the usual controls, you'll also now be able to indicate on what level you're affecting the image. So whatever we've been doing on the edit page refers to the edit sizing level. And my advice is that you never touch this. Whatever you set up on the edit page should pretty much stay there. Any additional changes you want to make to the position or the crop of your image, you do this in one of the other sizing controls. And this video is here to determine what the difference is between them. So first of all, we have input sizing, which is pretty much identical to edit sizing, except it's situated inside of the color page and not the edit. So I'm just gonna quickly make some extra nodes and apply some changes to them just to differentiate between the different levels. Inside of input sizing, any changes that I make to the controls will apply to the entire image, but will not affect any of the images around it and will affect all of the nodes uniformly. Output sizing, on the other hand, refers to the entire timeline. So if for whatever reason you decide you wanted to, to rotate every single clip, uh, if I was to start clicking around on the other clips, you'll find that they've all been affected uniformly. Now for the most part, adjusting the sizing controls of all the clips in the timeline doesn't really make sense. Unless of course you're working on something like a conference video or a single take video in which every shot is identical and you do actually want to affect them uniformly. But for the most part, the only thing we use output sizing for is blanking, which we're looking at in the next video. Perhaps what's a bit more interesting and usable is the node sizing option. Here the controls will only affect the node that you currently have selected in your node editor. So if I decide to zoom out a little bit, I'm going to be pulling out this window that I dropped on node number three, but because it's also receiving the RGB data from node two, we're gonna see a duplicate of our video being zoomed out as well, which is giving us a pretty interesting effect. In this quick example, I've made a serial node after my original footage of a football field. I've dropped a circular mask to select an empty portion of the field, and then I've used the sizing palette in node sizing mode in order to move that window across to where the people were populating the field, and that way I've covered them up. The last mode we have on this list is reference sizing, which is new to DaVinci Resolve 12.5. What you use this for is controlling still wipes that you're using as references for your grade. So for example, I've got a couple of shots that were taken at the same location, but at slightly different angles and times of the day. So I'm gonna grab this still as my reference. I'm gonna go on to the next one and double click my still to reveal it. And what I would like to do is basically align this portion of the image to the left over here so I can have a better visual idea of the colors in the image. I'm gonna switch over to reference sizing and I can now start panning the image across. Maybe tilt it up a little bit and definitely should be zooming it out as well. And using this, I might now have a better idea of what I need to do with the colors in order to get a good match. So the most obvious thing is the color of the trees, which has gone from this vibrant, saturated green to a darker green. The brightness overall seems to be quite different in the shots. And now that I've made these changes, I'm seeing a better match in the sky, in the mountain, and in the trees. And that's all thanks to being able to reposition my reference image after the fact. One final thing to mention is that just like the power windows, the sizing palette in its input and output modes gives you the option of creating presets. This can be really helpful if you've got a certain look or even an animation that you like to apply to certain clips and you want to save yourself some time by just clicking on the word create, giving your preset a name and then revealing it in the drop down list next time you need to use it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.